always been a dreamer. All of us were. We all start out that way. Daydreamers are born of candlelight and spellbound moon shadows. We tell time on the wind with dandelion seeds while sailing mighty oceans and broken pocket watch ships. We are the moment between dusk and nightfall. We are the once and future. We are chivalry and gods. Playing at magic as children, we embody make-believe and wonderment with every sorcerer's breath. But the everyday world wants nothing to do with imaginary and wishes. And the more time goes on, the more I suspect that maybe I'm not a dreamer at all, but merely a dream. why we're called storytellers. People come here to drink and enjoy good stories. And since the place opened in 1871, it's been our tradition to award a bottle of our finest wine to the best tale of the night. <laughs> but then I'd still young. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No one will top that one for a long time. Of course, parts of it are really, really bad, too. Then why do you keep reading it? <laughs> because some stories are magic. There are tempests wailing under the flesh of the earth. And this is the shroud of their thunder. What time is it? About 11. Oh shoot, I have to go. I have to go meet Janet and Melissa at the Alter House. I gotta go. The Alter House? Yeah, the nightclub. Oh, Renee. I'm 19. I'm at the peak of my clubbing days. Okay, I get it. All right, take care. Bye. It was it's good, good to see you. you. Have fun. What can I get you? Be right back, Vivian. She. I'm upset, but I'm not that upset. So no Twilight Zone tonight? Pardon? No Twilight Zone tonight? No customers either. Storm's keeping everybody home. Storm's not that bad. <laughs> you know, some stories are very dangerous to tell during storms. Hmm. You never know uh, what might be listening. Other tales are very, very dangerous to hear. When the sky is angry. So, not much in the way of stories tonight then, huh? No, I wouldn't say that, but uh, Mr. Serling and Zone will have to wait. 
storm screwed up the TV set, too. Guess you need to read the stories instead. Excuse me? Excuse me. What did you just say about the static? I said you need to read the stories out. The ambient noise of the universe can tell you every story you ever dreamed of. Oh, it can, can it? How so? I used to do a lot of research on the subject. You did research on snowy TV receptions? <laughs> Not specifically, no. But on ambient radio noise, specifically, uh, interstellar transmissions, to be exact, the ambient static noise of the universe. Really? Where'd you study? At a university? I used to be with the SETI project. I started out with Project Phoenix and moved on to Project Serendip. <laughs> you were with SETI? Oh. You were with SETI? I'm sorry, I... I... I didn't know, I mean... No, hard. no. <laughs> I understand. My, my appearance does not exactly fit the image of a well-educated scientific mind. I do have a PhD in quantum mechanics and astrophysics, but since, but since I live in a cardboard box, maybe origami might have been a more utilitarian skill set to a master. <laughs> <laughs> so, you say you were with SETI? Yeah, I was, I was involved with mapping the universe using radio telescopes to search the heavens for signs for intelligent life elsewhere in the galaxy. The assumption being that um, any technologically advanced civilization would have begun to use radio frequency transmissions to communicate within their cultures. Huh. So is that what you meant when you said that there are stories in the static that all of our television programs and radio transmissions are out there somewhere? No, what I mean is, is that the static itself is a language. I don't understand. Don't worry about it. My colleagues were some of the most brilliant minds in the history of mankind. And they said the exact same thing when I told them. Well, the word language connotates communication on a much larger scale. If, if the radio noise of the universe is a language, then who, then who invented it? And more importantly, who or what is using it to communicate? Right, girl. If only my wife had been so inquisitive. <laughs> Listen. All living things are a focusing point for the ambient noise. Sort of like how radio waves exist all over, right? But you need a radio to tune into them and to hear them. Well, this is just the same thing. Human consciousness exists in a greater consciousness within the universe. And what happens is, is that you have to focus in or tune in to hear it within the human mind. So, we are a part of that consciousness and of that language. Exactly. Hmm. Interesting. I guess I've just never heard that concept expressed in those exact terms before. Well, that's because my research was the first to prove it. Well, I'm no astrophysicist, but I would guess that deciphering that language would have to be next to impossible. How How'd you do it? How come nobody else has done it? I mean, I'm not questioning your competence, but... Well, how come no one else had done it before? 
No, no, that's okay. It's a, it's a perfectly understandable question. Why hasn't anyone else done it? How long did it take to prove that the Earth was round? 1492? Christopher Columbus didn't prove it. Thor Heyerdahl didn't prove it. Many people had, had suspected it for a long time. In fact, many people today still think the world is flat. My point is, just because something hasn't been proven, doesn't make it false. Proving that the Earth was round did not make it round. It had been round the entire time, we just didn't know the truth. And, and this is just the same thing. Many scientists have suspected this for years. But no one was willing to test their theories due to possible ridicule from the scientific community. Is that what happened to you? I used to have a wife and a son. I used to make $250,000 a year, and now I live in a cardboard box under a bridge. What do you think? I'm sorry. I didn't mean... Listen, I apologize. I didn't no. know that... No, no. It's all right. The misfortunes in my life are not your fault or your responsibility. I'm the one who's sorry. Listen, do you want to move over by the fire? Get warmer and maybe finish your story over there? That would be nice. what the bartender called you, right? Vivian? Yeah. Hello, Vivian. My name is Carl Drake. Professor Carl Drake. Nice to meet you. You too, Vivian. Let me explain something to you. I lost my wife because of this research. She left me. I, I lost my family. I ruined my career. Well, just because I believed in these discoveries, which everyone else said was crazy. So... I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. In fact, I'm eager to talk about it. Don't worry about insulting me. Because I've heard it all up to this point. Fair enough? Fair enough. I still... <clears throat> I still don't understand how you figured it all out. It isn't the technical facets you're concerned about. What you're really wondering is, is is if I can convince you of this crazy idea. Basically, yes. Everything I've told you so far is the part which is easy to believe. I haven't even gotten to the crazy part yet. So, why didn't anyone else figure this out? Dreams. Dreams were the key to figuring out. Dreams? Yes. When you dream, the mind loses focus and tunes into different frequencies. I had a colleague working in the MIT Artificial Intelligence Lab, and it wasn't until she could record dreams that we saw the patterns and learned the language to communicate back to the universe. Record dreams. Yes, I, I don't mean simply writing dreams down. I mean literally and biologically recording them visually as if they were movies. Human dreams have never been recorded that way before because we simply never had the technology or the knowledge to do it. And, and we still don't. And although we've begun to understand the electrical 
chemical process involved in dreaming, we couldn't still ram a bunch of sensors into a person's skull and take readings of every neuron. With an AI brain, it could be done. Every impulse of the AI brain was recorded, so workings of the mind that were never measured before in organic people was being logged and tracked for the very first time. <laughs> it, it was it was exciting work, uh, breakthrough technology. Of course, uh, uh, with such research, you always have troubles. And uh, finally, the AI scientists brought in a dream researcher to assist them with their research. Dream researchers? I thought they were all quacks. We aren't. You? I thought you said you're with SETI. I was, but I like to keep busy. The bartender told me about this place. Storytellers. Some of the stories are true, some aren't, so indulge me. Regardless of who I am or, or whether or not you believe my story, it'll be at worst an intriguing lie. Fair enough. Good. Do you want to know how I figured this out? Simple. I was the only person in the world who was studying very large-scale frequency patterns and who knew a great deal about dream research. It, it was the old cliché of being in the right place at the right time with the right knowledge. See, I noticed a correlation between the alpha state frequency patterns in the AI brains and the SETI research I was doing. I slowly began to realize that all the patterns and signals of our perception of reality already exist. That's, that's how, that's how psychics can dream about future events. That's, that's why some people feel deja vu. Sometimes like a, a radio picking up stray interferences, our, our mind tune into a slightly different frequency and we, and we get a sneak preview of the future. Or an insight into the past. Dreams are caused by our minds producing alpha patterns which are synchronized with those frequencies of the universe. We, we, we can see and, and hear and feel these conversations, if you will, in that language. We, we become aware of our place in a greater consciousness. When we die, when we die, our bioelectric energy is returned to that ambient frequency of the universe. When we're born, that frequency is retuned to create who we are. The great irony of all this is how every spiritual belief is correct. The universe knows itself. The universe itself knows it exists. Mm -hmm. Through the ages rose the dreaming, and the chosen were born from the wishing of the universe. What exactly are you saying? What do you think I'm saying? Well, it sounds to me that you're trying to tell me that you on an earth the capacity to provide documented, measurable scientific proof for the existence of the human soul. Uh, that. Pr proving that. Well, that would be, have to be the greatest discovery in the history of humankind. Trust me when I tell you that the price I paid for it revealed secrets even more profound. I don't understand. People's instincts are adamant about their spiritual beliefs. For centuries, people have died and killed for those beliefs. But you see, every one of them is correct. There is a God. There is no God. There is a heaven. There is no heaven. There is.
is no reincarnation. There is reincarnation. Atheists are wrong. Atheists are right. We become a part of the universe when we die, like, like a glass of water that's poured into a pond. When someone is born, a bit of that pond is poured back into the glass. That's why we have instincts of, of these past lives. That's why we meet people who feel familiar. Maybe we've never met them before. But we have the memories. We, we have the energy, the, the, the soul of someone else who had known a part of this other person. I don't know about that. Of course you don't. Next, next to fearing your own mortality, individuality is one of the strongest convictions in the human heart. People fear losing their individual identity more than they fear death itself. Tell people that they'll die and they're horrified. Tell people that they'll die but have an immortal soul that'll live on in and they're comforted. Tell the people that they'll die and become a part of a single consciousness of the universe. And they're just as horrified as if they would be if they discovered they would cease to exist altogether. The truth of the universe is so simple that no one ever sees it. Science, philosophy, psychology, religion, every facet of human belief and perception is so convinced that their views are correct. Their, their conviction runs so deeply that such truths become downright instinctive in people. Ironically, that they're all correct. Because the truth of the universe is part science, is part quantum physics, part philosophy, part religion, and part psychology. The, 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 the big bang, the, the big crunch. We are the internal heartbeat. He was starting to unnerve me. Maybe he was right. If life is a metaphor for death, then why couldn't all beliefs be correct? Cultures and humanity are so different all over this planet. We have different skin colors, hair, height, weight, and appearances. And life in China is nothing like life in India, which is nothing like life in America, which is nothing like Europe which is nothing like Eskimos, which is nothing like the Middle East. With so much diversity in life, and the way humans live, why do we assume death is the same for everyone? Maybe death is just as diverse as life itself. Maybe everyone is correct. Christians, Buddhists, Jews, Muslims, even atheists. What if they are all correct? If you believe that you go to heaven, you do. If you believe that you are reincarnated, you are. If you believe that you cease to exist, you will. What if every belief was correct? What an amazing thought. That one thought, that one acceptance would have avoided every holy war that has ever been fought in human history. Human beings spend so much time wrapped up in their own minds that they forget that every facet of their being, from body to thought, is a part of the universe itself. Philosophy and religion had tried for centuries to explain such things and failed. Now, here was one simple, elegant explanation which seemed to explain it all. The most unsettling part was the fact that some instinct in me knew it was all true. So, what happened to your research? Mm -hmm. Professor, what happened to your research? Mm -hmm. drove me insane. I was struck down by the wrath of the goddess in Kuruma, but I 
discovered the forbidden truth about the workings of the universe and had eaten from the tree of knowledge. So, the unseelie court. The darkest bands of the fairy host appeared and they blinded me. Excuse me, did you just say the fairies? The fairies appeared and blinded you? Yes. It's a common theme in numerous belief systems. Uh, uh, a common warning. In Christian mythology, the serpent tempted Adam and Eve with the fruit of knowledge, and for succumbing to that temptation, they, they were banished from the Garden of Eden. In Celtic lore, it's called the second sight. Fairy myths tell many renditions of people who were struck down by the fairy when the fae asked if the mortals if they could be seen. The morals are all the same in these stories. Possessing insight into the unknown can often lead to tragic fates. Right. Of course. Someone's telling secrets. It's getting late. I'm sorry. I should be going. What? Are you sure? Yes, I, I can't stay any longer, really. Telling you all this endangers you enough. I have to go. I'm sorry. Okay, well, let me help you. Yes, thank you. Is there anything that I can do or? No, no. I'll be fine. Again, I... thank you. Well, I can at least call you a cab. It's Don't a cold night. Don't worry now. about me, Vivian. We're scared. It's good for the soul. It really was a good story, Charlie. And I can see why you got the battle tonight. Listen, kid. I'm not stupid. I really am everything I claim to be. I know what you're thinking. You're, you're thinking I made this all up just to tell you a good story. And you believe me. I sounded so sincere, right? I really had you going, and it, and it all made sense until I mentioned the angels. You think the angels are part of the punchline? Fairies. You said they were fairies. Angels, fairies, they're all the same. It doesn't make any difference. I swear to you, on my life, on the life of my family, on, on everything I've ever held dear or sacred in my heart, everything I've told you is true. Science has never dispelled supernatural magic. In fact, I'm living proof. I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin of substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind who woos even now the frozen bosom of the north.
shadows have offended Think but this and all is mended That you have but slumbered here Whilst these visions did appear And this weak and idle theme No more yielding but a dream